Hi, I'm John Marr, and I'm here today with Kevin McCullough of the Law Office of Mazo McCullough. Today we're talking about injuries involving scars. Welcome, Kevin. Thank you, John. So, Kevin, how often do personal injury cases involve permanent scarring of the injured uh, individual? Um, I would say surprisingly higher than most people would think in that it's not just the happening of an event that can cause a scar, but oftentimes serious injuries may require surgery, and obviously surgical incisions can result in scars. So um, in general, on third-party injury claims, we see it a lot more frequently than you might think. Um, and certainly with certain types of injuries, we see it even more frequently. For example, dog bite cases, 100% um, of the time there's some form of scarring mm. and whether or not it's permanent. Um, in motor vehicle accidents, depending on where you're seated in the vehicle, if uh, there's glass that breaks, the windshield cracks, um, different objects within the vehicle can cause cuts or lacerations. Um, and horrific crashes, even some of the metal can cause cuts or lacerations resulting in scars. Uh, and even with slip and fall claims, we've had slip and fall claims that occurred um, within stores where a client slipped on um, a substance on the floor and then as part of the fall, not only hitting the floor, but hitting certain items within the store like shelving, mm -hmm. um, cutting their fingers and forearms. So um, we see injuries involving scarring across the board with all of the types of claims that we handle. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, uh, unfortunately, even if the event itself doesn't cause or lead to a scar, if there's sur surgical intervention down the road to help treat the injury, um, that will result in a scar as well. Right. So generally scarring occurs when you have like a, a deep cut and then you need stitches, say, or something like that. And then that those those parts of your skin just don't ever kind of like perfectly heal so that it's flat, right? Yeah, that's correct. And it can be um, with a dog bite. It can be um, more of a puncture wound that mm -hmm. may not sound as painful or um, as horrific of a scar as a, a bite or a laceration, but sometimes a simple puncture wound can be infected uh, or the way that the skin handles and skin um, heals in different ways uh, every time, even on the same person, depending on how the incident occurs. Um, but the, the level of scarring and um, whether or not it heals can vary dramatically depending upon the depth of it, as you mentioned, or if it's just a skin scratch. Um, we see oftentimes with motorcycle crashes where someone will suffer injuries that are referred to as road rash, mm. where um, those can be horrific injuries with um, skin damage, not to the extent that they can perform um, stitches or suturing, um, you simply have to let the wound heal. Um, and simply the scratching of the skin, the scarring that can result from a motorcycle road rash type injury um, can look horrific. It can be extremely painful. Um, it may involve skin grafts. So okay. uh, it, it goes across the board from puncture wound to depth to uh, a scratch that could leave a mark. Right. So do physical scars like that generally affect the outcome of a personal injury settlement or a trial? Absolutely. Um, you know, when we look at the different components of damages that we pursue and try to recover for our clients, um, certainly if someone suffers scarring, that's a big component and part of the case. Um, but more than just a, a piece of the case, it's it increases the value of the case because it's permanent in nature. You see it forever. Um, you know, with a, with a motor vehicle accident, with physical therapy treatment, or even a broken arm, you can heal and move on and be fully recovered. But when there's scarring involved, no matter how small um, it may be, it's always going to be there. It's never going to go away. And that increases the value of someone's claim. And other factors that can inf increase the, uh, the value of a claim um, with scarring, even small scarring, can be if it occurs on children or if it occurs on um, someone's face um, or on their hands, um, you know, different parts of the body, in a, any reasonable person, you know, would, would know and appreciate uh, um, how a scar on someone's face may impact them versus mm -hmm. on their chest or on the back of their arm or something like that. Um, so, so yeah, the, the age of the individual, where on the body the scarring may be, um, those are all different factors that could certainly uh, impact and increase the value of a claim. Okay. And how does that come up during the trial, and how do you talk about that with, you know, maybe, maybe even a potential jury? 
um, you know, and explain to them that, yeah, this, this child now has this scar that's on their face and they're going to have to live with that for the rest of their uh, life and it might affect, um, you know, their ability to find a life partner that, you know, to, 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 to be with or uh, it might affect the, them being able to get a, a job later on in their life or, or how do you sort of explain that to a jury uh, so that they understand the full implications of, of this scar? are and the, the effect that it's going to have on this person's life. Yeah, so as far as evidence at a trial, we use um, visual um, photographs, sometimes videos, um, deposition testimony, and firsthand the jurors getting to see the scar. Um, those are typically ways that we would present those damages um, to the jury. But there is the component of trying to show the jury that it is going to be um, potentially a life-altering injury or a life-altering scar and certainly going to be there for the rest of someone's life. Um, oftentimes what we see in the cases that we handle because the scar is a result of a traumatic event, um, you know, we don't see it that it would be, um, you know, preventing someone at least we don't believe, you know, from entering a certain um, relationship or getting married, although they may feel that way mm -hmm. with the psychological piece of an injury. Um, but those are all things that we have to try to quantify and have to try to show to a jury of value. And oftentimes, by the time we get to trial, there is some healing that goes on with the scar. Mm -hmm. So it is important for us to work with our clients and having the knowledge of trying cases with certain injuries and certain types of scars to know what evidence works best and to know what a jury wants to see. And it's important to have that experience so that when clients come into our office, <clears throat> excuse me, we capture those injuries as they are presently mm -hmm. at the time of the event or trauma in the healing process. Because if it's as simple as I have a scar on my leg and this is what it looks like now, that's not what that person lived through. It's the scar that remained an open wound that didn't heal for several months maybe required a skin graft. Um, those are all different things that we try to capture along the way to be able to show to the jury. And again, I was mentioning earlier that these scars typically result from a traumatic event. What we see is in the future, when the case is closed and someone uh, is dealing with the scar, the questions that other people will ask. For example, if you're at the beach and you take your shirt off and you have a, a scar on your back or on your shoulder, mm -hmm. people may genuinely ask, oh, what's that from? Mm -hmm. And for most people, it's not the fact that they have the scar or that someone even mentioned it. It's just that now it's triggered that traumatic event that okay. that person went through, that that client went through. They have to remember and, that and, accident. Yeah, yeah, and relive it. And when someone says, what's that scar from? it immediately triggers that traumatic event where now you're into telling a story to someone to, to explain the scar that you have, mm -hmm. and you're sort of reliving that event again. And there's no compensation that we can get for that client at that point in time, or if it comes up weekly or monthly or yearly. Um, so those are things that when we're presenting a case to a jury, to show the scar, to show the healing process, to, sh to try to put um, the jury into sort of those shoes of, wow, this is what they went through, even mm -hmm. though it looks good now. And by the way, someone's going to be asking about this scar mm -hmm. indefinitely moving forward. Um, and, and again, reliving those events can be a horrible situation beyond the physical part of the scar. Right. So you have that physical scar, but that you have that emotional scarring as well. Yeah. yeah and you have to take that into account.